Bitte, Lärm auf. A good love story in today's movies feels like a lost art. In an age where many of us have lost faith in institutions and traditions, trust in the promise of an ideal and everlasting union has also faded. It's safer to be cynical and wary of unlikely romances, of star-crossed lovers, of happily ever after. Sorry, I'm late. I didn't think you'd come. But one forgotten film dares to dream of an ideal love. One that is dislocated by time and distance, but strengthened by its aboriginal bonds. This is Vincent Ward's Map of the Human Heart. The movie is an Eskimo's lifelong recollection told in first person by Avic, played by Jason Scott Lee. Most of these flashbacks are imparted to a map maker, played by John Cusack. The true story of those maps and how they changed my life. I'm really very busy. I was born not far from here. My father was a white man. You're half white? Best of both worlds. What are you doing? Avic then encounters another white man in Walter Russell, played by Patrick Bergen, a mapmaker who takes a liking to the young Inuit. Little does he realize what Mark Avic will leave in his life, just like the little one's phrase. Holy boy! <laughs> you mean holy cow? Holy boy. Oh boy? Holy boy! <laughs> holy boy it is then. <laughs> Once Walter discovers that Avic has tuberculosis, he tells Avic's grandmother, played by Jacob Bitsailak, of his plans to treat Avic in Canada. This separation is the first of many highs and heartbreaks that will befall their lives. While receiving treatment at a Montreal clinic, Avic meets a fellow indigenous patient, one of Métis descent. I want you to see what happens next. <coughs> Clearly love at first sight. With their shared isolation and similar heritage, these two unlikely ward mates are destined to become soulmates. <laughs> When Albertine, played by Anne Parayo, reunites with Avic, you can almost feel the sparks fly. I'm no ghost. I never thought I'd see you again. It's like a dream. We're here. Hey! You have to protect my holy boy. He's king of the Arctic. So this is where you keep your girls. But fate has yet to spare its cruel tricks as another reunion occurs, filled with disbelief rather than with joy. Have it. <laughs> We're not strangers, are we? Walter. Colonel Johns? Hello. Ginger? <laughs> He gave Albertine the x-ray. Went all the way to Ottawa, one thing led to another. Fate brought us together. These plot developments can all seem soapy on paper, but they never feel melodramatic. The movie is filled with long quiet moments, allowing for its characters to breathe and its audience to reflect. Women are a map, Avic. You've got to understand their longitude and how much latitude you can take. The film also gives great effort in delivering dreamlike and sensuous imagery, which is evident in perhaps two of the most idyllic romantic sequences ever put on film. No CGI here, the first of which 
The second has to be seen to be believed. <laughs> I shouldn't have taken your dare. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Is this how a bird feels? <laughs> Red skin. Cannibal. Half breed. <laughs> Red skin. Cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> But what makes us hope for Avic and Albertine's union are their youthful incarnations in Robert Jomi and Annie Galipon, with their authentic indigenous backgrounds, wide smiles, and unforced innocence. They make empathy effortless. These two star-crossed partners aren't the only noticeable pair. The movie is sprinkled with parallels and dualities enhancing the story's poignancy. From a song unheard through the years, to contrasting vistas of ice, and hellish fire. This all culminates in a conclusion full of the real and the imagined, as we witness the closing of an epic life and love story directed with soaring feeling and ambition. Do Avic and Albertine reunite in the end? Whatever you believe, remember the hymn. Is it a happy song? I think so. <laughs> <laughs>